I had never really been into wrestling, but Derek, a friend and classmate from college, was a big fan of that type of entertainment. When he found out I had never been to a show, he invited me to one that was coming up soon. I accepted, since I didn't mind trying something new. A few days later, he told me, Oh, another friend of mine is going to come with us too. Is that okay? Yeah. I arrived at the show venue long before Derek and his friend. We had agreed to meet a little before it started, but time passed and he was nowhere to be found. At some point, I received an audio from Derek. Hey, Archie. Uh, you see, my mom... Something happened, uh, and I won't be able to go. I'm really sorry. Don't worry, I replied. I hope everything is alright. Soon after, I received another audio. But Mark is still going, you know? You guys could go together. Sure, I sent him. I told him how you look. He'll be there soon. Thanks, Derek. See you later, I replied. The truth was, I was an outgoing guy, so I didn't mind meeting this Mark guy. After a few short minutes, a very tall and skinny man started walking toward me. He was wearing a sweatshirt that said, The Boogeyman, and he kept his hands in his pants pockets at all times. Are you Archie? Yes. Uh, are you Mark? Obviously. Nice to meet you. He looked me up and down with no expression on his face. Let's go. Um, uh, okay. We started walking into the place together. Derek told me you're a big fan of wrestling, so you must be very excited, right? Yes. Mark didn't seem like a very talkative person, but maybe he was just shy. You know, wrestling has never really excited me. He looked at me with annoyance. I mean, I've never been to a show. This is the first time that I... I know, Derek told me. I was starting to feel uncomfortable. Uh, it's a shame Derek couldn't come, don't you think? He didn't tell me much, but I... You talk a lot, you know. Uh, wh what? I hope you don't talk too much during the show. I don't want any distractions. Uh, yeah, sh sure. After that... I kept quiet. We sat in the middle of the audience, not too close but not too far from the ring. As red lights came on and people started screaming with excitement, Mark said, It's beginning. Almost immediately the presenter began to speak. This is who we call the Boogeyman. A man with a face painted red and black like a devil appeared. <laughs> the Boogeyman? After a few seconds, I remembered why his name seemed familiar to me. That was the same thing that was written on Mark's sweatshirt, so I turned to look at him. The expression on his face surprised me. He had a big smile and was staring at that wrestler. Uh, you must be a big fan of the Boogeyman, right? Your sweatshirt? Shut up. Uncomfortable, I went back to watch the wrestlers again. I hadn't paid attention to the other's introduction, so I didn't know who he was. But his appearance was much more common. He just had a black outfit. Suddenly, the bell rang, which meant the beginning of the fight. The other wrestler decided to start with a punch, but the boogeyman was able to grab his arm and throw him to the ground. There, he held him until the other wrestler managed to get up, grabbed him by the head, and threw him away. The public screamed. No, no, you have to win the boogeyman. Mark's voice gave me the chills. He, instead of sounding excited like everyone else, wanted the boogeyman to win so badly that he seemed to be obsessed with it. The boogeyman used his opponent's attack to his advantage as he gained momentum thanks to the railing. He jumped on top of the other wrestler and caused him to fall. A loud thud was heard as he hit the ground. Yes! <laughs> Uncomfortable, I turned to look at Mark. <laughs> Suddenly... His eyes, which were wide open, focused on me. The best part is coming. You have to watch it. Look at him! I quickly shifted my gaze to the wrestlers. The truth was, I preferred to see them than Mark. Three, two, and one. The boogeyman had officially won. <laughs> it's time. Suddenly, I watched as a small bag was thrown at the boogeyman, who reached down and opened it. From inside the bag, he pulled out a handful of something that was moving. I soon realized that they were worms wriggling in his hand. The boogeyman walked up to his knocked out opponent, opened his mouth, and started filling it with worms. 
I could see some moving and coming out of his mouth, which immediately made me nauseous. It was disgusting, but the public seemed to like it. <laughs> For a moment, when the boogeyman grabbed more worms, I thought he would give them to his opponent too, but I was wrong. That man took them to his own mouth and swallowed them. <laughs> I had to put both hands over my mouth to keep the vomit from coming out. My stomach felt queasy. <laughs> he is always the best. After the show, Mark and I walked together to the bus station, which was a bit far. I wanted to get home as soon as possible since I wasn't feeling well at all. Surprisingly, Mark spoke. Did you like the show? I, uh, uh <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, it wasn't how I imagined it. With the Boogeyman, this show is always a surprise. Yeah, I, I agree with that. He is my favorite wrestler, you know. I listened as Mark opened his backpack. I admire him a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I noticed. <laughs> he is the best. After that, I heard Mark eat something. Hmm. Uh, do you want some? Uh... Turning to look at him, I felt as if my heart stopped. In his right hand, Mark had worms, just like the boogeyman. What? What, what are you doing? You liked the show, didn't you? You have to do it too. Mark walked up to me as I tried to walk away, but I soon ran into the alley wall. Eat them, Archie! <laughs> He put his hand full of worms in my mouth. Oh! Soon, I began to feel the movements of the worms, and although I tried to keep my mouth closed as much as possible, some of them managed to get inside. <coughs> Feeling the worms moving inside my mouth made me so disgusted that, with all the strength I had, I pushed Mark, who fell to the ground. Then I vomited. <coughs> <coughs> Already on the floor, the worms moved about among the vomit. What the hell is wrong with you? You are... you're crazy! <laughs> I thought about calling the police, but the truth was that I didn't want to be around that lunatic any longer. So I left with the taste of vomit still in my mouth. The next day, I told Derek what had happened. He tried to contact Mark, but it was impossible since Mark had blocked him. From that day on, I didn't go to any wrestling shows again due to the fear of meeting that sick guy. Hey guys, thanks so much for all the support. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please feel free to do so. I have to admit that I've been a fan of WWE since I was a kid. I know that many people all over the world don't understand how WWE generates so much interest in people, but I know it's something from our country. It's like one of our national sports. As I grew up, my fanaticism grew more and more. My parents didn't like it, saying it would make me too violent, so I could never go see the fighters live. When I grew up, I started to pay for my own tickets without anyone being able to tell me anything and I went to see them whenever I could. A few days later, after going to a WWE show, I went to my parents' house to visit them. As I walked in, my brother Joshua came running up to me. Did you go see the Raw wrestlers? What were they like? Did they fight backstage? <laughs> Hi, Joshua. No, they are very professional. They fight only in the ring. That's not true. Many times I saw them fight in the parking lot or backstage. That's true, but there's always a camera on. Don't worry, you didn't miss any fights. Hey, are they still in town? Can we go see them? You know what mom and dad think about this. I don't think they'll agree. Come on, Aiden. You have to ask them. I don't want to wait until I'm old like you to see them. If you want me to do you a favor, you didn't start out on the right foot. But okay, I'll ask. Joshua was 15. But when we talked about WWE, he sounded like an eight-year-old. He was just as obsessed as I was as a kid. And I admit it, made me feel bad that they wouldn't let him go either. After all, I knew my parents' fears were unjustified. I spent the afternoon with them, and to my surprise, they agreed to let us go, only if I took care of him. 
They knew that I grew up with WWE and was a very healthy young man. Maybe it was time to modernize and accept that WWE is just healthy fun. When I told Joshua, he jumped with joy. I have never seen him so happy, and I gotta admit that as I watched him, my inner child was just as excited as he was. Getting tickets for Raw was not easy since they were almost sold out, but I made it. When we arrived, Joshua couldn't stop screaming with excitement. The Cedric Alexander vs. Drew McIntyre fight was just about to start, but the main attraction was the referee. Aiden, look! That's Kurt Angle! I'm looking at Kurt Angle! I know, right? I never imagined I'd see him in the ring. The fight started, and my brother kept jumping up and down, until a strange noise froze him, and he opened his eyes as if I'd never seen him before. The whole ring went black, and terrifying music started to play. The Fiend had appeared in the ring, attacking the legendary Kurt Angle. I was enjoying the show, but Joshua was quiet, analyzing what was going on. When we walked out, I was still full of excitement for everything we saw, but Joshua was acting weird. Hey, you're not freaked out by the Fiend, are you? Uh, he's just a fighter. No, I wasn't scared. The Fiend is great. He beat Kurt Angle with one move. Oh, his answer caught me off guard. So, what's wrong with you? I always thought fighters like Kurt Angle, Hulk Hogan, or The Rock were invincible. Do you think maybe they're not? Listen, Joshua, these wrestlers are ordinary people. We are all ordinary people. You, me, mom, dad, and even Hulk Hogan or The Fiend. Meaning I can be like The Fiend? You mean I can be like The Fiend? If I were, I wouldn't let anyone ever knock me out. <laughs> yeah, of course, but I don't think mom and dad would let you. Exactly. Days went by, and my parents started to worry about Joshua. They would send me WhatsApp messages telling me that he was acting very strange. He hardly ate, didn't talk to them, and they suspected he was missing school. Every day I tried to calm them down, until one day they stopped sending me messages. That day, I tried to write them, called both of them, I even asked Joshua, but nothing, no answer. I was really worried, so I decided to go over there and make sure everything was okay. As I walked in, I ran into Joshua, who started yelling at me in a panic, telling me I had to go to the kitchen. With no time to react, I ran in desperation, and when I got to the kitchen, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Both my parents were on the floor in a huge pool of blood. They were both dead, with cuts all over their bodies. Whoever attacked them was very angry, as my dad had more than 20 stab wounds distributed in his arms, legs, head, and body. The knife was still embedded in his head, like a flag. Someone had also dragged them, as the floor was covered with marks. I turned around looking for Joshua. I had to get him out of there. But suddenly, I felt a hard blow to my ankle. I fell to the ground in pain, and I could see how my bone had slipped out of place, ripping my skin. Behind me was Joshua, wearing a mask of the fiend and with my metal baseball bat in his hand. Ah, uh, Joshua! Why? You were right, brother. No one can forbid me from doing anything anymore. Damn it, Joshua! That was mom and dad! You stupid idiot! You, you've ruined your life! <laughs> you've ruined it! My life has just begun. Soon I'll become like the fiend, and I'll be the one giving the orders! Before I could say anything, I heard someone grunting. It was my mother, who was somehow alive. She hadn't received injuries like my dad's, but she had lost a lot of blood. But Joshua saw her too. Joshua, no! I tried to stand up, but I couldn't. Not only was I in immense pain from my foot, but a part of me was afraid to face my little brother. I know it may sound crazy, but I still loved him. I couldn't imagine hurting him. Without saying anything, Joshua started hitting her with a bat. 
Her head began to crack like a watermelon, exposing her entire brain. My mother was still shaking, but it was just a reflex. She was already dead. While I was still crying, I saw my brother, covered in my parents' blood, approach me. Joshua, you're 15 years old, okay? The Fiend is an ordinary person. He is just an actor. The only thing I remember is that before I could finish the sentence, Joshua hit me in the head with the bat and everything went blurry. When I woke up, my head hurt terribly. I was very dizzy and I couldn't see anything. I felt like I was suffocating. At that moment, I realized there was dirt all over my body. I was buried. I pulled myself forward and got out of the hole with great ease. I could tell that whoever had done this to me was very inexperienced. Full of pain, I limped to the kitchen, determined to stop my brother before he hurt someone else. But it was too late. When I found him, he was lying on top of my parents with his throat cut open and a knife in his hand. No! No, 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 no! The police arrived soon after and arrested me, but when they realized I was innocent, they let me go. The police found a letter my brother wrote before he committed suicide, but I didn't want to read it until many months later. When I opened it, I expected to find a remorseful Joshua, unable to deal with what he had done, but I was wrong. The letter said that he had already gotten rid of all his earthly ties, that he had already killed his parents and me, and that he was ready to become one with the fiend. When I checked his computer, I found in his browser history many Satanism and ritual internet pages where the users encouraged him to do everything he did. After that day, I decided to keep watching WWE, but the day I have children, I wasn't going to forbid them from watching it. No, I was going to accompany them and educate them while they did it. Well, you know, wrestling is fake, all right? No, where the hell are you back? Oh, come on, dude. Where with you, huh? <laughs> wrestling is fake. Well, you know what I mean. It's, it's entertaining. I don't know what you mean. Well, it's entertainment. It's not real fighting. It's not... When I was a kid, I used to be obsessed with WWE. My room had posters of all the famous fighters from Undertaker to The Big Show. So when I turned 18 and my uncle bought me a ticket to my first WWE match, no one in my family could stop me from going there. I didn't ask anyone to join me because I wanted to witness the fight uninterrupted. I drove to Madison Square Garden where the match was held. It was Undertaker versus Triple H. So you could imagine my level of excitement. All the fans of WWE were gathered there. I made my way through the crowd of people and finally found my seat. I might have only taken a sip or two of my cold drinks, but that's when I felt a little weird, like something was different around me. As I turned to my left, I noticed him for the first time. A skinny, pale man was sitting beside me. Even though nothing was striking in his appearance, his eyes gave me the creeps. He had these big, yet drowsy eyes, like he had just recovered from some critical disease. His head turned slowly toward me and we exchanged a gaze. I smiled awkwardly, but his face remained void. There was no reaction, not even an eyebrow twitch. He kept staring at me without blinking, and that's when the announcement happened. Undertaker entered and the crowd jumped off their seats. I never screamed so loud in my life before. The sound of the applause of fans cheering gave me goosebumps the moment I saw my favorite WWE fighter appear on the stage. Undertaker rolled his eyes and stuck his tongue out. It was his signature move, and I felt like I was nine again. It was like a dream come true. Though everyone was going nuts at the moment, the man beside me didn't get up or even cheer. He just sat there like a lump of clay. No emotions, no expressions, nothing. Undertaker and Triple H entered the ring and I sat down. People went on cheering and the fight began. They were dissing each other as they do, and for the first time, the man beside me spoke. Here comes a punch. What? What did, what, what did you say? Before I could clarify this matter, I heard the stadium go crazy 
and Undertaker threw a punch at Triple H. Even though I couldn't hear what the man said, I surely did hear him say the word punch. Seeing me staring at him with a confused face, the man turned toward me and smiled. He then raised his bony head and pointed the ring with his filthy index finger and said, Time for an elbow drop. I immediately looked at the ring and saw Undertaker climbing the ropes and getting ready to do the same move the man had just mentioned. He elbow dropped and Triple H grabbed his stomach in pain. The crowd went crazy. I would have too, if not for this man sitting next to me. The dream match of my life was slowly turning into a scary movie. The man predicted the next move, and the move after that too. No one heard him except me, so it was only my face that turned pale in fear at that moment. But he was the same. Watching that mouch with his drowsy yet creepy eyes, and smiling in between like a deranged person. I decided to change my seat, so I thought to get up when the man turned toward me and said, You are going to cut yourself. What? Soon. There will be blood coming out of you. Are you fucking insane? <laughs> Just in a few seconds. He laughed and I got up to leave right then. But as I grabbed the seat in front of me for support, I failed to notice the sharp iron rod peeking out from the corner. And his prediction was true again. Blood came out of my palm and I looked back at the man. He was staring at me already, but this time he wasn't smiling. He said in a low voice, Punch, ankle lock, and here comes the Undertaker tombstone. <laughs> His eyeballs started to move fast, and everything he said kept on happening. I had enough, so I called out to him. What the hell is wrong with you? What do you want? Hearing me screaming, the man sitting in front of me finally intervened. Stop screaming, let me watch the match. Tell him! It's all because of him! I pointed out to this psycho and the man in front of me looked at him. He then looked back at me and said, eh, How much did you drink, bro? What? The seat beside you is vacant. There's no one in it. He went back to watch the match thinking, I was drunk and I froze in my seat. I wanted to move my body, but I couldn't. I slowly turned my head to the left and right where I was talking to this man the entire time, I found the seat empty. No one was there. The seat was vacant. I searched as far as my eyes could go, but I didn't see this guy anywhere. The rest of the match was ruined for me already. When it ended and I came out, I went straight to the bathroom. I splashed water on my face and somehow got my shit together. Maybe this guy was just kidding me? Maybe they both knew each other and pranked me? I was trying hard to explain it to myself, but nothing came to my mind. I went there two days after. It was a holiday, so except for the cleaning stuff, I saw no one. I wandered in the corridor aimlessly, and then suddenly my eyes went to the left wall. A picture was hanging on the wall, and under it, a bunch of candles were burning. The moment I saw the photo, a shiver ran down my spine. It was that same man whom I saw two days earlier. It came as a shock that that man is dead, and not withholding my curiosity, I went straight to the cleaning guy and asked, What? What happened? How did he die? Uh, you know Larry. His name is Larry? Yeah, he used to work here. He knew everything about this place and, and those matches. Maybe that's why he was drowned last week. Last week? He was drowned last week? Yeah, he used to say that all WWE matches were fake. No one ever fought anyone, and all the moves were already decided. He started spreading this rumor, so the fans got suspicious. The authority couldn't risk it anymore, so I think someone murdered him last week. His body was floating upside down on the lake. Are you okay? Why are you asking about Larry? Nothing. Um, oh, I'm fine. With trembling footsteps, I walked back to my car. I vomited in the parking lot before getting in. It was clear that Larry found a dark secret of the WWE authorities, and that's why he was silenced. But the fact that I saw a man who died a week before 
while sitting in a stadium full of people still unsettles me to my core.